Hello, everybody. My name is Aaron Standard. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Petabridge. And today I'm going to talk about a new open source framework that we've invented called NBench. So NBench is a open source performance testing framework that's designed to help .NET developers add automated benchmarks, performance tests, and stress tests to their .NET applications using a really familiar interface that feels a lot like writing a unit test. All right, so I'm gonna give you a little demo of how NBench works. So we're gonna write a really simple little benchmark here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this class real briefly. Then we're gonna go ahead and install the NBench NuGet package. So just wanna type install package NBench. I'll go ahead and fetch the latest version from NuGet. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a counter using NBench. We'll go ahead and call this op counter. And then we're gonna create what's called a performance setup method. So this is a method that'll take a benchmark context object provided by NBench. Go ahead and decorate this with a perf setup attribute. And we'll go ahead and say the op counter come from context.get counter, my counter, like that. And then we'll have our actual benchmark. So we'll go ahead and call this benchmark method. This method can optionally be at change to include a benchmark context too if you want. So I'll talk a little bit more about how the framework works in just a second. We're gonna go ahead and declare this. It's gonna be a performance benchmark. Uh, we'll go ahead and say the number of iterations is gonna be 13, which means we're gonna run this benchmark 13 times. We're gonna set the run mode to be um, a throughput benchmark. We're gonna run that throughput benchmark continuously for up to a thousand milliseconds. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this into, yeah, we'll go ahead and put this into a measurement test mode. And then down here, we're gonna go ahead and declare a counter measurement. So counter measurement. We'll go ahead and pass in the name, my counter. All right. And then in here, we'll go ahead and do var bytes. Equals new byte. We'll go ahead and declare, I guess it's a 1K sort of buffer there. Go ahead and do a memory measurement too while we're at it. And we'll go ahead and say the memory metric we want to track is total bytes allocated. And then we'll go ahead and in increment the little op counter here. All right, so what this benchmark is gonna do when we uh, compile and run it here using the nbench runner is it's gonna go ahead and create an instance of this POCO class It'll go ahead and invoke the setup method first and stash this little counter that we're going to use to measure the speed of this little benchmark method here. Uh, it'll go ahead and preallocate this counter and stick it here. And then it's going to go ahead and run this method uh, 13 times for continuously for a second each. And it's going to record the value of this counter at the end of that uh, second long window. And it's going to record the amount of memory that's been allocated too. So we'll be able to go and get a report of all of that. So we'll go ahead and uh, compile this here and we'll get ready to run the benchmark. Okay, so I went ahead and compiled a debug mode version of our uh, binary. We're gonna run the uh, nbench test that I just coded in there against it. And one of the things you can see I did here in this, con this console window is I used a NuGet to install the nbench.runner package. So that includes a little uh, console application we can use to execute an nbench benchmark. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into the packages folder here, go to nbench, and get the uh, little runner here, and then we're gonna run it against the nbench demo, go into the uh, bin folder, debug. And let's see if I can look in here real quick. There should be a binary in here. Yeah, I guess it'll be nbenchdemo.dll. So we'll go ahead and type that. All right. So this should be enough for us to go and start a little benchmark. So you can see here, it generated some uh, total bytes allocated in one little counter operation. 
And now we can start to see just how many uh, bites and everything it did through all those different warmups. And this will continue for a little bit. And at the very end, we'll get a written report that we can go and view. So that shouldn't take too much longer here. All right, look, it looks like it's all done. So I go and take a look in the root folder here. You can see this little uh, markdown file that was generated. So I'll go ahead and bring that over. All right. So a little markdown file here. This is the report that NBench creates. You can see some of our system information. So you know that I have eight cores and I'm running Windows 10 and I've got this many threads, this version of the CLR, et cetera. And you can see the uh, settings that NBench had and was run with. And then we can see here a little table for all the aggregate metrics. So we can see that that uh, counter was updated about 9.3 million times per second on average. And that value is a pretty consistent sort of across the board there. Actually, I'm sorry, that's the total value. This is the per second values down here. It's so about 13.3 million on average. Then if we scroll down, we can go and start to see the uh, total amount of bytes that were allocated on each run. So it's a fairly consistent number, although the times for allocating them do vary. And we can also see the raw data table for each of the 13 iterations of this benchmark here. And you can see that we're running the same number of operations each time. It's because our uh, warm-up mechanism in NBench was able to compute roughly how many operations translates into one second. And the math can be a little off there. But then we sort of adjust for that here by taking the total amount of operations and divide it by the amount of time, which we measure very precisely using a stopwatch. And it gives us the operations per second. And we're able to time the operation. We can see that it takes about 71 seconds, 71 nanoseconds to go and perform one of those little operations inside our benchmark. And you can see here we're allocating somewhere in the order of looks like uh, 1.8 megs a second. So if we're allocating, um, I guess it would be... 9.3 million of those little 1k byte arrays and some of them get garbage collected you can go ahead and see how that number would uh, be somewhat imprecise but still in the right ballpark so that's an end bench in a nutshell right there so what you just saw is this process to create an nbench benchmark you just have to define a little poco class that is a c sharp class of the default constructor and then you decorate that class with various nbench attributes. So that includes the uh, perf setup and perf cleanup attributes. And then but most importantly, the perf benchmark and those little measurement attributes we used instrument specific things we want to measure in a given benchmark. And then we run the nbench runner, that little uh, console app that produced the markdown report as well as the console output we saw. And then you go and review the report that you got from the nbench runner at the very end. Now, in terms of the list of the supported metrics that NBench supports, we have simple counters, which are what we were using in this example. And these are ways of measuring throughput of user-defined code. So you use a benchmark context to get access to a counter that was declared in one of those counter measurement attributes. And you can use that to measure the number of operations per second that occurred in some part of your program. Now, these simple counters are thread safe, so you can use them in multi-threaded code that you're trying to benchmark too. Next is we have uh, memory benchmarks. And right now, the most important metric we allow you to track is total bytes allocated, where we go ahead and use the garbage collector to tell us how many bytes is your application using before the benchmark. And then immediately after it's done being run, we go and measure how many bytes was it using afterwards. And we report back on what the difference between those two numbers was. And then next we have garbage collection. And we allow you to collect the total number of collections per generation. So, you know, .NET uses a multi-generation garbage collector and a generation two gar uh, collection is much more expensive than a gen zero garbage collection. So this allows you to go and measure how many different collections occur at each generation. And if you're writing performance uh, critical code, you wanna try to reduce the number of gen two garbage collections to zero if you can. And then I put this in gold because it's not quite done yet, but we're gonna add support soon for being able to track any Windows performance counter and run the exact same types of assertions and reports against that. So that way you can measure anything from, 
you know, low level CLR metrics to things like disk utilization and all sorts of other stuff that's not covered by these three other built in metrics we have above. So NBench is pretty extensible and should be able to give you access to a really large range of different metrics you might want to test when you're writing performance tests. So we're just going to talk a couple of nuts and bolts real quick about NBench. So the life cycle of an NBench benchmark is important to bear in mind because it affects how you design your benchmark classes. So the first thing that occurs during a benchmark is we initialize it. Uh, we go ahead and allocate all of the collectors and the things that are, we're going to be using for actually instrumenting the benchmark. And then we go through this phase called the pre warm up phase. Uh, the purpose of this is simply just to JIT your code and make sure it doesn't throw any exceptions. So we go and run a, a little goofy pre warm up once. And then we'll go and run an actual warm up uh, 13 or 14 times. And that's used to determine for a throughput tests roughly how many operations will add up to being about a second long. And roughly, uh, you know, it's also designed to sort of help. Make sure that your code gets cached into the L1 cache on the CPU and help isolate some of the noise in the system. And then we have the for real benchmark. And these are the numbers you get back on the report, which is the final step of the benchmark lifecycle. So this is sort of the way a, a individual benchmark class gets run. And then next we have the flow for how an actual benchmark runs. So this would be like one pre warm up, warm up, or actual benchmark run method, how that gets executed. We allocate a brand new instance of your POCO class every time. We go ahead and invoke the setup method if there is one. We then invoke the benchmark method. We then go and invoke the cleanup method, and then we destroy the object. And so for every iteration of your benchmark, it'll follow this flow. Now, the one big difference in how this flow gets executed is when we take a look at some of the modes and settings we have, we have a, a particularly important setting called a run mode. A throughput run will go ahead and continuously call the actual perf benchmark method without calling the setup or teardown method continuously for a, as long as it, as it can per that uh, runtime milliseconds value that you set. So that's the, the goal of a throughput test. Think of it as a throughput test is really a stress test where NBench does the work for you, trying to stress that method. Then there's an iteration test where NBench doesn't do any math and trying to figure out how long your method takes and doesn't try to estimate how many times it can run it. It'll just run it the number of times you tell it to. And you really want to use the iteration benchmark mode for anything that's multi-threaded or anything where you're trying to test something that's like a lot closer to an application block instead of like a single function call. Like throughput tests are designed for very small pieces of code. Then there's the test mode. So we have a measurement, which is what we were using before, and then we have test. So a measurement system is one where Instead of defining a counter measurement attribute, you could uh, declare what's called a counter throughput assertion attribute, where essentially we go and instrument the counter and we measure it, but then we perform an assertion against that benchmark at the very end. So for instance, this counter must be at least 1 million operations per second is something you could define in the attribute. And our readme explains more of this. What the test mode does is it overrides whether or not you have any of those assertions defined, you can basically say, you know what, we're gonna run this test in measurement mode and not actually run any of those assertions. And that affects the exit code that the NBench runner will return. So if everything is set to measurement mode, the NBench runner will always return a zero exit code unless one of your benchmarks through an exception. And this is helpful when you start integrating it into continuous integration and all that sort of stuff. And the next we have the number of iterations. So this defines how many times we're gonna run the benchmark for real. And this will dictate sort of the number of averages and everything else. Typically, you wanna set the number of iterations to be at least 11 or 13. And if you increment it higher than that, it's usually a good idea to try to set it to a prime number. So that way the operating system doesn't do any funny sort of uh, you know bitwise alignment stuff with anything that's divisible by two or something like that. So uh, it's good to set that to, an, uh, to a uh, prime number. And then we have the uh, runtime milliseconds, which is used primarily by throughput benchmarks to figure out how long we should be calling this method for. 
And then on individual measurements, like I said before, you can actually go and declare assertions, different types of assertion attributes. So if you're interested in learning more about nbench, you should go to github.com slash petabridge slash nbench and go ahead and take a look at the readme and uh, the instructions that we have on how to actually go and write tests and what some of the best practices are. And you also might want to consider subscribing to the Petabridge blog. We'll go ahead and periodically uh, put more videos out and give you best practices and other good stuff too. So thanks for watching and uh, good luck performance testing your apps.